Hey guys, and welcome to the shack. In this video, I'm going to show you how to dehydrate a hydrated salt. The salt that I will be dehydrating is copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. Hydrates form because dissolved ions carry charges. The likelihood of an ion being hydrated depends on its charge density, or the ratio of its electric charge to its size. If an ion is relatively small and has a relatively high charge, then it has a high charge density. On the other hand, if an ion is large but has a small charge, then it has a low charge density. Water molecules, because of their polar nature, are attracted to ions with high charge density and surround them forming what are called ligands. The ions, now surrounded by water molecules, are referred to as hydrated ions. A prefix is added to show how many water molecules surround each ion. When the solution is boiled down or evaporated, the component ions bond together to form a salt. However, the resulting salt still has the water molecules of hydration in it. This forms a salt hydrate, also known as a hydrated salt. In this case, we have aluminum chloride hexahydrate, or hexahydrated aluminum chloride. Copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate forms when a copper 2 plus cation, surrounded by five water molecules as ligands, bonds with a sulfate anion. Hydrates usually follow the general formula salt times number H2O. The coefficient on the salt is always 1 and is emitted. The coefficient on the H2O tells you how many water molecules there are per salt formula unit. Okay, so you may be asking, this is all great information, but why should I go to the trouble to dehydrate a salt? As it turns out, salt dehydration is very useful in a number of applications. For example, I will be using the resulting anhydrous copper sulfate to remove water from organic solvents. It is also necessary if you need a salt for a reaction that is sensitive to water, such as the Grignard reaction. Finally, it will also allow you to experimentally determine the formula of your hydrate if you don't already know it. Not knowing the formula of your hydrate can really screw up your stoichiometry. I will show you how to dehydrate a salt while simultaneously determining its formula. First, place a crucible on your balance and record its mass. Then, measure out some of the salt in the crucible and record that mass. The mass of your salt is the second value minus the first one. I have measured out exactly 4.99 grams. I had to grind mine down in a mortar and pestle because the crystals were so large. This is because powders dehydrate much more quickly than large crystals. Now simply heat the copper sulfate with a torch or burner until all of the water boils off. It should start clumping together like this within a few minutes, and it may even form a large block on the bottom. Do your best to break up any chunks and expose as much of the still wet salt. Copper sulfate turns white when it has lost all of its water. However, most salts will not do this, so to determine when to stop, you will just have to monitor the steam coming out of the crucible. When the steaming stops, heat for a few minutes longer to remove every last drop of water. Once all of the water is gone, let the crucible cool down and then reweigh it. From this mass, you can determine the formula of your hydrate. After performing all of the necessary calculations, I determined that the molar ratio of water to copper sulfate was 5 to 1, which makes sense as it was labeled as a pentahydrate. Some salts, especially this copper sulfate, are hygroscopic, meaning that they absorb water from the air and effectively rehydrate themselves. Thus, if they are stored in a container that is not tightly sealed, they will turn back into a hydrate and make your efforts fruitless. The best way to store hygroscopic chemicals is in a desiccator bag. See Nerd Rage's video, which I've linked in the description, for more information on how to create and use a desiccator bag. And that's all there is to it. We have successfully made a dehydrated salt, or an anhydrous salt, from a salt hydrate. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.